All right. We're about to talk about this migrant crisis in Chicago. Um, if there's something on here that you like, hit that like button, share, subscribe to the channel. Help us get in that algorithm. You know, we want to try to hit 200 subscribers. I know that's a small number. I'm just starting getting back in this game. But I'm um, going to start dropping a lot more of these videos. And I'm sure y'all are going to like what I got to say. Because a lot of you out there like me, no matter your race or your religion, you're feeling the same way I'm feeling about a lot of situations out here. All right. First, um, I want to talk about... um. Do you, do you guys out there really know that the city of Chicago has spent almost 200 million dollars on the migrant crisis yes that is two zero zero milli on the migrant crisis when you have people in the city of chicago all races especially the blacks the latinos and some of the poor whites off 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 the west end that are suffering out here you know they don't even provide simple city services that these neighborhoods are not getting they're not reinvesting in these neighborhoods but soon as a stranger a person that entered this country illegally and all of us went to school so we know what a country is we know what the rules are but it seems like the rules can be broken by a certain few not for everybody but a certain few if you're in that select group you and that crew you can do it. Well, I've been watching what's been going on very, very close ever since the trickery came down from, I believe it was a light foot administration when they brought over a few hundred migrants over to um, a school on the south side. And this was after the previous Chicago mayor closed 50 schools in Chicago, majority of them on the south and west side. This service, black majority black and some Latino um, students. Now, all of a sudden, they had money to do a full rehab. It's called Wadsworth Elementary. Take a look up that school in Chicago. For, you, for those of you on the south side of Chicago, that's over there by Mount Carmel, Stony Island, y'all know exactly where Wadsworth is at. You know, it, it's just a, a disgrace. It's an embarrassment. It's a smack in the face for those of us that have been lifelong Chicago residents like myself. Lifelong. I was a Cabrini Green baby till my daddy came and saved me. So I've seen poverty. I've seen it come from the lower end. And even back in those days, government wasn't helping us, wasn't trying to help us. But the crazy part about this migrant situation is majority of these people in Chicago, and I, I'm saying about 85% of them that what I'm saying, okay, smaller, lower, lower, 75% are working age men. These are not teenage boys. These are 20-something, 30-somethings. Men coming over here. Military age men, men with some training, men that we don't know what they went through in their country because they don't have to go through what we go through here in the city of Chicago, let alone the country of America, uh, a country of America, which they call United States. Y'all need to know United States is not a country. It's a corporate corporation, corporate fiction. Just look it up. It's in the U.S. code. They tell you United States is not a country. It's a business. So they'll play this game, open border game that these Democrats been playing. They've been playing this game because it's all a business. But they ain't making no money off because they're not making the International Monetary Fund pay for them. They're paying for it at the detriment of suffering of you. A lot of you people got kids that went out and joined this military, joined that military. Going over here, and you ain't did no fighting for nobody in this country, let alone the city. We got to stand up against this migrant situation that's going on in the city of Chicago. They need to put those funds in our pockets, in our neighborhoods, fix our neighborhoods up. 
give us the money we need to improve on our house, our property, so we can bring some value. That'll cut down the crime. They're not interested in cutting down the crime. If they was, they could have been invested that two hundred million differently. And Brandon Johnson. Like you said, just turn this joker red. My whole lifetime here, I, it hasn't been a Republican mayor. So I don't know what will happen if a Republican mayor, but it can't be no better than Brandon, Lightfoot, Rom. Um, who was before Rom? Um, Daly for all those years. But you see what Daly did, he took care of the neighborhood he grew up and his family was raised in. Let's go over there behind White Sox Park. Go over there from Halstead, from, say, Archer all the way to 47. And look at everything over there is new. It's not a vacant lot like it used to be in the 80s, early 90s. He, he, he cleared that up. He built new houses and, and the house that was already there, the city paid for them to have new facades. So if you wanted um, um, Tug Point and all that done, they used TIF money, the tax increment financing, the stuff that they keep adding to our property taxes here, that they could have been using also to improve these neighborhoods, but they'll give $100 million to a business to open up a business to make money off the people. That don't make sense. So yes, it is time for a Republican to come here, take over this state also. JB? he's another one no he hasn't done nothing for the people he's only pushing agendas but you got to think about it he's already a billionaire he don't give a damn about us and what we got to say he played that role and then he pulled um the lieutenant government in, in in there with him that was to play off the black votes in chicago and the women here in chicago she's from right there in hyde park i know i spent about an hour at my own home talking to you do you remember that sister and we talked about the stuff in my neighborhood ain't nothing got changed you the only reason why i even went and registered to vote juliana stratton because she spent that time out there with me same thing with my alderman you come out here you talk that stuff never seen nothing from you actually andre andre smith was running also it's crazy when you just see over the years what these people are doing is nothing so Chicago, if any of you guys from Chicago hit, hit that like button if you're feeling what I'm coming from, because I know your mother, your grandmother them went through it and feeling it. You, you, you 15, 20 year olds, y'all not going to feel it. Y'all don't really understand. You probably seen it and understand. Some of y'all that's been through it, I know y'all understand it. But some of you that had a better life and all that, you don't understand it. But when you start hitting this working world and you're seeing taxes coming out your check, and the things are a little bit differently than what it was, it hits a little bit differently. And then as you age up into your 30s, you say, whoa, ain't nothing changed. But then you they keep telling you to vote because they plan you. But to give all that money and we get nothing, you guys got to start holding back the financial dollars. You got to figure out a way to stop spending in the city. I know it's hard to do. Because everybody got to make the gas station runs, the food runs. That ain't going to work. But if it was some type of way, just can't keep supporting people that's not supporting you. You can't just be looking at a face and, and things like that, especially, um, you know, us brown skin Americans. I'm not calling myself black because I don't call myself black. I don't look black at all. I'm brown. I was born in America. I'm an American. You're not going to label me with an adjective. So when I'm speaking to you guys in these podcasts, you know, I'm just going to say American or brown American. But I'm just not using my, I'm not calling myself black and I don't put that stuff on these applications either. I don't mark nothing. Or I put other. If anything, I'm Indian, which my grandma was. I ain't playing these games. But I'm just saying, people like me, people like the, 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 the Latinos, and people like the poor whites. There's some of them sprinkled in, in between us. We didn't get, we don't, these neighborhoods don't get nothing from 
all around. So I'm just saying, stop living the Obama dream. That was the biggest deception ever. For you guys that's coming into these, into, into up in age, into your 30s, you, you get into your mid-30s that, that lived through the whole Obama hype of, was that 10 years ago or whatever. It was all hype. About 15 years ago, whatever it was. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I got more to come. Got a couple more videos I'm, I'm going to be doing on this. So I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to be talking on some other things. We're going to see if we can come up, you know, with a way. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Share this channel. You know, let's try to get to 200 subscribers. Talk to y'all in a minute.